Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Hey, what's up with it, boxing fam? It's your boy, Hot Boxing Minute. Back at you with that uncut realness as only I can deliver it to you. Before we begin anything, hit that like button. It's good for the algorithm. Help your boy out. I'm trying to build a brand. You already know how this YouTube thing works. Anyways, on the subject of boxing, we had a bunch of fun fights this weekend, some crazy knockouts, and I'm going to try to cover the biggest fights, or at least the biggest fights that were most big to me. Uh, as far as what happened this past weekend, we had a cool fight card out there, a DAZN fight event out there in Monte Carlo, in uh, whatever you want to call that, Monaco-Monte Carlo, and uh, Lake Tahoe out there in Northern California. So to begin with, let's talk about that Monaco and Monte Carlo fight card out there in DAZN, the beautiful Royal Kingdom of Monaco. You had a bunch of cool fight cards. You had the Joe Cordina versus Edward Vasquez championship fight for the IBF super featherweight strap. Drink. You know, it's wild. I blew my voice out like almost three weeks ago at the Giovanni Santillan versus Alexis Rocha fight, and my voice is still not fully back up to snuff. So bear with me, y'all. We're going to get through this together. But anyways, on that Joe Cordina, Edward Vasquez fight card, the first thing I want to talk about was Adrian Curiel. Adrian Curiel got the vicious second round knockout over Sivanati Notchinga. I apologize if I diced up that dude's name. Shivanathi Najinga was the IBF junior flyweight world champion who had been in some awesome and fun wars. People were speculating on him fighting the Japanese great Kenshiro Taraji in a junior flyweight title unification fight. That all got dashed to pieces once again. The mystery Mexican comes out of nowhere. Adrian Curiel coming into this fight with Najinga was seen as a relative non-factor. He's only had four knockouts in his boxing career. Well, he got fifth, the fifth knockout of his entire career against Notchinga, a defending belt holder, a defending champion. A one-punch counter to a jab, overhand right, or a right hook, I don't know what you want to call it, but it knocked him out. And nobody, nobody saw that coming. So, Notchinga is no longer the champion. Adrian Curiel is now the IBF junior flyweight champion. The other champions in that division include Bomba Gonzalez and, of course, the unified champion, Kenshiro Taraji. What a shocking, shocking knockout win. This is part of the reason why we love boxing, folks. It is so wildly unpredictable. And I know not a lot of folks are into the flyweight divisions. I am. The good fights between fighters that fight regularly and fight against the best always happens in around the sub featherweight divisions. It just is what it is. Once the money gets higher, they get picky and choosier. You know how this goes, folks. But anyways, for those of you that saw that fight and saw Nachinga get knocked out in that second round, what did you think? What's Adrian Curiel's chances against the likes of Bombo Gonzalez and Kinshiro Taraji? Let me know in the comment section, y'all. Let's chop this one up. I do love some knockouts. And you know what I mean? So we got to give it up. Knockout. I just want to celebrate. You got you to gotta love the good knockout, folks. I'm always going to give my hats off to the knockouts. Boxing fans want to see knockouts. Now let's pivot over to that women's match. Some of y'all might not be into women's boxing. I am, especially when it's the big names. Ramla Ali got the unanimous decision win over Ulyssa Guzman in a get-back fight. She got her revenge. Ramla Ali, for those of you who don't pay attention to women's boxing, is kind of big deal or is a big deal out there across the pond in the UK. She is a model. She is a humanitarian. She's a human rights activist. And she can also scrap. So she got the first loss of her career a few months back against this girl, Julissa Guzman. Julissa Guzman is a super band and weight, and she has knockout power. She has an over 50% knockout to win ratio. She knocked out Ramla Ali viciously in their last fight. And Ramla Ali wanted it to wanted that get back immediately. So they had the rematch yesterday, and Ramla Ali did not just only come to box, she came to fight. She hired the she hired Manny Robles to help her in her corner. And Ramla Ali from the opening bell was sticking to Ulyssa Guzman like white on rice. She was not about to just box circles around Ulyssa Guzman. She came to fight and she outdogged Ulyssa Guzman, which was a risky venture in and of itself because Ulyssa Guzman, as I stated earlier, is a knockout puncher. And Ramla Ali did get hurt in that fifth round. She held on. But regardless, Ramla Ali came in there 
model looks and all, and came in there and fought like a dog. She was up in Ulyssa Guzman's chest the entire fight. A couple of moments, she got dazed, but she worked her way out of it. Got the clear unanimous decision win over Ulyssa Guzman. Very, very fascinating fight, folks, because Ulyssa Guzman had that crazy look in her eyes during the fight week buildup and all the media events. You could tell Ulyssa Guzman is a couple of tacos short of a combination plate, but that girl is as tough as they come. Ramla Ali was pretty much shooting laser eyes at her, and I thought it was nervous energy. Clearly, it wasn't. Ramla Ali had a chip on her shoulder. Boxing community, for those of you that saw Ramla Ali outdog Ulyssa Guzman this weekend, what did you think? Let me know in the comments section. You know, we got to chop this one up. And uh, hats off to Ramla Ali. Let's give it up to the supermodels. Hey, if you're a model and you look good and you can fight, I'm going to have your back. Because I, ever since I was a young kid, y'all, I've always liked to watch girls fight. To this day. To this day. To this. No, I know some of you guys aren't big into women's boxing. I ask you to reach into yourself to when you were young and you were on the schoolyard and you loved watching girls fight at some point or another. Was it your insecurity? Was it your dad's voice in your head that made you stop watching women's boxing? I don't know. I'll always be down to watch women fight, especially when it's high level fighting. And that's what Ramla, Gu Ramla uh, Ali showed us this weekend against Ulyssa Guzman. Now, to move on to the uh, other card, I want to talk about that main event. <coughs> Pardon me. I did make some videos about it. My voice has still not recovered from that Alexis Rocha versus Giovanni Santillan fight. I don't know what that's about. But we had the title fight. The IBF super featherweight strap. Joe Cordina fought Edward Vasquez of Fort Worth, Texas. And it was a fun fight. Joe Cordina successfully defended that strap and got the unanimous decision win. Or a majority decision, sorry against Edward Vasquez. The judges had it 116-112, 116-112, 114-114. -114. My hat's off to Edward Vasquez. It was an awesome fight. He clearly disagreed with the with the decision in the fight. I had it a draw. I think it could have gone either way. It was a great back and forth, very technical, competitive fight with swings and momentum. Nobody really got knocked down, but it was highly entertaining. Joe Cordina had the jab, was using his, his technique and doing uppercuts and hooks. And Edward Vasquez was connecting on his hooks too. Edward Vasquez was the shorter man with lesser reach. But every time Edward Vasquez would get inside, he would get off some good work. Edward Vasquez, this is the second loss on his career. The first one came at the hands of Ray Ford. Many people felt that he won that fight against Raymond Ford. At the very least, I think Raymond Ford should run it back to give the fans closure on that whole rivalry. Uh, regardless, Joe Cordina, hats off to him. He won the belt against Kenichi Ogawa, got stripped, won his belt back in a vacant title match against Shakvat Rakaboff in a very fun fight where he got a unanimous decision win. That was a clear win for him. This fight was his, I guess, his first defense of his recently reacquired IBF strap against Edward Vasquez. Hats off to Joe Cordina. I ain't mad at the decision. I had it a draw, but Joe Cordina got the unanimous decision win. The other champions in his division, Hector Luis Garcia. Oshaki Foster and Emmanuel Navarrete. So he's got some monsters in his division. Boxing community, for those of you that saw Joe Cordina's performance, what did you think? Let me know in the comments section, y'all. Let's chop this one up. Hit that like button, by the way, y'all. Don't, don't leave me out here. You know what's worse than watching this and not participating is watching this and not participating. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. It's good for the algorithm, y'all. It's good for the algorithm. So we're going to pivot out from that fight out there in Monaco, Monte Carlo. I don't know what you call it, folks. It's both or neither. Mm. And let's head out to Lake Tahoe, California. I think everybody loves Lake Tahoe. I've never been there, but apparently it's a nice place to go catch skiing in the wintertime. A lot of fighters go there for altitude training. They were out there fighting. And you could tell altitude was affecting some of the people. It was a fun little fight card. There were so many good fights on it. I can't go over all the prospect fights. One of the ones that stood out to me was um, Henry LeBron against William Foster III. That was an awesome and fun scrap between two undefeated contenders. William Foster III is probably most famous for giving Edwin De Los Santos his only loss. Edwin De Los Santos in a week uh, in about a week is going to be fighting 
Shakur Stevenson, so he's got his hands full. William Foster III had such a fun fight with Henry LeBron. Henry LeBron from Puerto Rico is a very, very fun fighter to watch. He was just a technically sharper fighter during the course of that fight. Congratulations to the island of Puerto Rico because that guy, Henry LeBron, can fight. Man, what a fun, technical fighter. It was a battle between two southpaws. I think the right decision was made. Henry LeBron got the decision win, and he maintains his undefeated record. Boxing community, for those of you to watch that crazy chess match, what did you think about Henry LeBron's performance? What's next for Henry LeBron, Henry LeBron in that super featherweight division? Or the 135 division, I believe. It's it's a lightweight. Actually, let me see what the division is. Hold on. I believe it was super featherweight. Yes, it is super featherweight. So, super featherweight. Uh, he beat William Foster III, who was a giant super featherweight at five foot ten. But, um, you know, Henry LeBron from Puerto Rico, man, he's a jewel. He's a jewel. He got that win over William Foster III. William Foster III, of course, gave Edwin De Los Santos his only loss. Edwin De Los Santos has wanted to run it back, but William Foster III figures not. Oddly enough, Edwin De Los Santos is the one challenging for a title. But that man, Henry LeBron, he's got wins over Luis LeBron, he beat Andy Vences, he beat Carlos Ramos, and now William Foster III. Puerto Rico has a jewel with that guy Henry LeBron in the super featherweight division. It's a super competitive division, folks. The champions in that division are Oshaki Foster, Joe Cordina, and Emmanuel Navarrete. So, you know, he's got some, some fun possible matchups in that division. I think he's easily one of the best in that division that doesn't have a title. And he got that competitive win over William Foster. Like I said, boxing community, for those of you that saw that fight, what did you think about Henry LeBron's performance? What's next for that jewel from Puerto Rico? Shoot, what did you think about William Foster III? Let me know in the comments section, y'all. Let's chop that one up. Um, there was no knockouts in that one, but let's move over to the knockouts because we love us some knockouts. I just celebrate. So, you had um, Lindolfo Delgado. Ooh, Lindolfo Delgado from Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico, got the crazy fourth round knockout stoppage over Celestino Ruiz at one minute and 53 seconds into the fourth. Lindolfo Delgado, I saw him fight in San Diego a few years back in a fun barn burner, and I've been watching him ever since. He had a stinker of a fight in Glendale, Arizona against Jaime Valtiera on the undercard to Emmanuel Navarrete versus Oscar Valdez. I thought it was a stinker. A lot of fans were kind of apprehensive about him after that, but he more than made up for it in that fight last night out there in Lake Tahoe, California against Luis Hernandez Ramos. Your man Lindolfo Delgado was pretty much dominant from the opening bell. Luis Hernandez Ramos, as tough as he is, is just a front-footed, heavy, come-forward fighter. Your boy Lindolfo showed he can move laterally. He can fight competently off that back foot. He was pretty much using his jab to kind of keep him gauging the reach and just kind of letting Luis Hernandez Ramos get tired. Finally, in the fourth round, he turned it up, countered him with an uppercut, and that was pretty much all she wrote. After that uppercut landed, Luis Hernandez Ramos was pretty much a dummy, or not a dummy, a heavy bag. He was a heavy bag there to get hit, like a crash test dummy. But, yeah, he was getting beat up pretty nasty before referee Celestino Ruiz called it an end at 1 minute and 53 seconds into the fourth, giving Lindolfo Delgado the win by TKO in a very, very awesome knockout highlight footage concussive punch. Boxing community, for those of you that saw that, what do you think about Lindolfo Delgado? And what's next for the 140-pounder from Nuevo León, Mexico? Let me know in the comments section, y'all. Let's chop this one up. And, um... Oh my goodness, Raymond Murataya. Ooh, we hold on for a second. Let's 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 cheer it up for Raymond Murataya. <laughs> wow, I'm a fan of that guy. I'm a fan of that guy. Let me let me pull up Raymond Murataya's resume. Hold on. Okay, so Raymond Murataya, Raymond Murataya, what he did last night against Diego Torres was spectacular. It was a work of art. He was truly dominant from the opening 
Bell. He was pretty much playing with his food. Mind you, Diego Torres was undefeated and had like a 94% knockout to win ratio. Diego Torres was a beast. And he completely nullified Diego Torres with intelligent distance management, fighting behind his jab, intelligent counter. And of course, he has power in both of his hands. He also showed that this odd quality of, despite being a front foot heavy type of fighter, he has excellent mobility. He was kind of stuttering, stepping backward and forward, you know, moving back and forth out of range, moving laterally. This kid, Raymond Murataya, is the goods, folks. He got the knockout in round eight at one minute and 45 seconds. You know, um, the over under was seven and a half. So sorry to all the gamblers. They lost that bet, if I'm not mistaken, because 15 more seconds would have been seven and a half to over under. Raymond Murataya looked really good. Timothy Bradley said that right now, Raymond Murataya beats Keyshawn Davis. He even went on to say that if Keyshawn Davis were to fight Devin Haney for the straps at 135, he would put his money on Raymond Murataya. And I can understand that. I can understand that. It's, dude, Raymond Murataya looked so good last night. Another great key acquisition in the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy stable. You had my man Giovanni Santiago a few weeks back. Now we had Raymond Murataya lighten up the division, the 135 division. Boxing community, for those of you that saw Raymond Murataya's performance, what did you think? And do you agree with Tim Bradley's assessment of Raymond Murataya? Let me know in the comment section, y'all. Let's chop this one up. We all love those vicious, vicious knockouts, especially when they come with power. And some people were saying, excuse me, that the referee might have called it too early. I don't. Diego Torres was taking clean punches, and there was no point in furthering damaging Diego Torres. Let that man live to fight another day. So, Efe Ajagbe, the... The headline event on that top rank card this weekend was F.A. Ajagbe versus Joe Goodall. F.A. Ajagbe got the fourth round TKO against a tough Australian. Both of these guys had ended up beating my personal gym mate, Stephen Big Shot Shaw. Tragic because I think Stephen Shaw can beat both of them, but it is what it is. So F.A. Ajagbe this weekend got that fourth round TKO stoppage over Joe Goodall. F.A. Jagbe showed he fights competently behind that jab. He's gotten some better mechanics since that fight he had against my gym mate, Big Shot Stephen Shaw, and he ended up getting the stoppage. Joe Goodall had no method to get around that jab, and pretty much F.A. Jagbe was using that reach to keep him at distance. Joe Goodall had some early success in rounds two and three. He got around the jab a couple times and made it dirty on the inside, or got some good shots on the inside. Didn't really make it dirty. But Joe Goodall's really only path to victory against F.A. Jagbe was to get inside. And F.A. Jagbe did not let him get inside. In the fourth round, F.A. Jagbe caught him with a vicious uppercut, had his legs on Stanky Leg Street. And Joe Goodall never really quite retired. At 50 seconds into the fourth round, hold on, in the fourth round at 50 seconds, Tony Weeks called a halt to the affair. And I think it was a good call. Joe Goodall was getting hit with some very clean punches. Uppercuts, right crosses, uppercuts, right crosses was the story of that fight. F.A. Jagbe, I believe he called out Big Bang Zhang afterwards. Boxing community, what did you think about F.A. Jagbe's performance? Is he ready for the likes of Big Bang Zhang? Let me know in the comments section, y'all. Let's chop this one up. So, you know, you love some, some knockouts. I love some knockouts. Do you like some knockouts? I think I can safely say that everyone loves knockouts. Are you not entertained? Are you not so boxing community that's where i'm going to end this video hit that like button if you haven't already done so leave a comment in the comment box if there's a subject i did not cover in this weekend's fights that you felt was worth covering i'm going to end it here this is hot boxing minute folks the future of boxing analysis on youtube and tiktok until next time peace out